Hello everyone, this is Ninja. This is episode 20 of Ninja Feeds the Beast. And today we're going to work on a uh, little more power upgrades. Uh, I'm going to add a nuclear reactor. First off, uh, you might already notice some changes up. As you can see up in the mini-map, we are now in Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack. And my world switched over pretty easily. Um, there were some items that, that are lost, I think. It gave me some error messages like uh, missing missing IDs or whatever. And, um, you know, you just hit yes and everything should be fine. It just gets rid of the uh, train craft, I think. I've had some, what is it, uh, coal dust. Yeah, coal dust was was made with uh, the train craft workbench or whatever. So I lost uh, just a couple things. Um, I didn't really mess with train craft at all, as you guys know. I also I I switched the I switched the Enderman farm to a skeleton farm. Um, I went out and killed chickens with my. Or I'm okay. At first, I made a bunch of soul shards. And I went out. I went out and killed uh, a bunch of chickens with the um, uh, what do you call it? The soul stealer sword, the vile sword. And I was able to upgrade um, a couple soul shards to tier five. I got a skeleton. Um, I might make a make a zombie farm too. I don't know, but this isn't an XP farm anymore because I just put it at the same level as where the Endermen were, and if skeleton drop from that high, they die. So uh, this is just for gunpowder, at least for now. I think if I make another XP farm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it maybe to the side of this one, uh, so we're still close to the enchanting table and everything. Um. So yeah, you just turn this thing on and uh Or no, this <laughs> Yeah, this this is a creeper. Uh well, why did I say it was a skeleton? <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, this is uh this is for gunpowder. So uh cuz we're going to need a lot of this for the iridium plates so we can have uh industrial TNT so we can put that stuff in the uh what is it? The implosion compressor. I just have a bunch of transposers that they fall and die on here, um, and I just have pneumatic pipes under all all these, and uh, they all just go into a chest. And this is all automatic. I don't have any. You know, I could just put one in the middle and send it a, uh, a redstone pulse through a timer. But since the timers cause a little bit of uh, frame rate issues, I'm I'm not going to do that. So this this is good. Alright guys, I almost totally forgot to mention this. Uh, I got an uncrafting table finally. I got the maze map focus. I went to Twilight Forest and I found a uh, a labyrinth. And there's a room that has like a bunch of chests behind bars. And uh, I think I got it in there. Um, it's either that or from a drop. I don't remember seeing it in the chest. But I didn't really have a lot of time to look in the chest because... Um, yeah, I had a bunch of, uh, what are they, minotaurs <laughs> coming after me. And those those guys can kill you pretty quick. So I went in and I looked at one real quick and I broke it with the chainsaw and collected everything from it. So um, when I got back from the Twilight Forest, I noticed it was just hanging out in my inventory. So I was like, hell yes. Okay, and I made one. And there's a lot of things you can do with this thing. Um, you can repair stuff you can get the components that you originally made the thing with so I could grab like a stick out of this since it's almost broken um, or you can actually upgrade to I could make this a diamond sword um, I think that's gonna cost like 45 levels though or, or even more let's let's check this real quick cuz yeah that'd be or oops wrong thing So I could just add a couple diamonds, and there we go. I could get a diamond sword with all the same enchantments on this. That is very sweet. 51 levels now, though, <laughs> this is going to cost. But that'll be worth it, for sure. Um, it'll be have a lot more durability, because this thing, 
even though it has Unbreaking 3 on it, it still doesn't last all that long. And yeah, the, they updated Ray's minimap. Um, I'm not sure where they're, they're um, keeping the files for for your waypoints, so I, I lost all my waypoints, but that's okay. Um, if, if they show up in this one, they're a little different anyhow. They um, You can actually have like a beacon uh, showing you where it is so you can see it from a, a pretty far distance. So yeah, you can you can tell where that, that waypoint is, that's for sure. Uh, you can always disable that so it's not showing, but um, I don't have it. I don't think I you can have it assigned to a key anymore though. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, my voice is a little off. I think I'm coming down with something. It's only hurting my throat, but yeah, it's definitely affecting my voice. <laughs> okay, one thing I noticed in the ultimate pack, there's there's quite a few more mods that this this thing adds. Um, one is um, what's it called? Ener energistics or something? Uh, applied energistics. I think that's that's like um, logistics pipes. So I, that's that's pretty cool. I may up, end up replacing all this with with that. Um, I haven't looked into that at all yet, <laughs> or actually haven't looked into any of the new mods that this thing adds. Um, you can. Oh, but this this does add uh, mistcraft, so I'm gonna start messing with that. I barely scratched the surface of that stuff in the beta A pack, um, and Mindcrack pack was lacking mistcraft. Um, it was almost tempting to switch to the direwolf mod, but um, this, the mind mind crack had Greg Tech, so I chose Greg Tech over over the Mistcraft for for that at least that amount of time. Um, I was hoping they would come out with a pack, kind of like for everyone, <laughs> um, at the time that they released the mind crack and the direwolf. It was it was kind of strange. I thought they were just coming out with like a, a feed the beast but you you only really had those two options at the time <laughs> so that, that was a little disappointing back then but you know since um i follow a lot of the guys from from the mindcrack server and uh you know i like watching all their stuff and following along with those guys so i chose to go with mindcrack but um i'm excited now that the ultimate pack is out for sure it's uh it's nice having a pack that's not like you know, linked to another YouTuber. <laughs> One thing I was I was looking at with this pack is, I think they've updated. Uh, this has newer versions of a lot of the existing mods that that I was already messing with, like uh, Greg Tech. I think has some new stuff. L or not Greg. Let's uh, let's get into the mods here. Okay, Greg Tech add on. And I don't have the textures for this. Um, advanced electric jetpack. This thing is awesome. <laughs> I I messed around with this in creative a little bit because I was I was trying to work out exactly what to do with the nukes. Um, <clears throat> but it adds a a new jetpack that I think it functions exactly the same but it's a combination of the advanced lap pack which I have already and electric jetpack so I can combine these two and you can basically you know run all your tools off of this thing and fly around so I think I'm gonna make one of these things I want, I want to see what the texture looks like this in uh, default because I think it's gonna be a little a little while until they come out with a uh, texture pack for the ultimate pack um, so I'm going to switch to it real quick and I'll, I'll be back. All right, I'm back in the default texture pack. Um, oh, I've got some, I need to redo my keys a little more. Um, cause uh, I noticed I tried to create a new world and hitting, typing anything with, uh, a G in it crashes the game <laughs> and it, it has an error message about, um, something about secret rooms so there's there's a, a key bind in there that's that's bugged for sure <laughs> um, anyhow let's let's take a look at the the new jetpack in the default texture pack so let's see well it was down here at the bottom what's going on here oh okay there it is 
advanced electric jetpack, so that looks pretty cool. Um, it will look better once they update the faithful 32 by 32. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like um, in the absence of the texture packs right now. Um, okay. Okay, I'm back in the faithful 32 by 32 texture pack. Um, Everything we're dealing with today won't be using any of the textures that are missing yet, so um, let's get into the nuclear stuff. Alright, I've got a nuclear reactor, which is a bunch of these reactor chambers. Um, this this used quite a bit of um, copper, because you got to put eight in the compressor for each each one of these, and altogether I needed nine, so you know nine times four. Um, Plus a lot of this stuff needed the uh, copper. Yeah, copper for each one of these, and then oh wait a sec. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I used aluminum for for the heat vents, and then yeah, you just upgrade them all with a uh, couple copper plates, and then these um, these need a lot of gold. I found these these seem to work just as good as the stuff that requires diamonds, like the heat exchangers that, what is it, the advanced heat exchanger requires a diamond, and I don't think it really performs uh, really quite as good as this one, um, at least the way I, that I'm, I'm having it set up right now. I mean, I'll, I'll probably figure it out a little bit better later. Um, I use the, um, the planner, or it's a Java-based interactive like nuclear reactor that you can you can set things up and see like how things are going to end up whether whether it can sustain the the heat that it's generating <clears throat> and you can you can figure out your setup to make your com your nuclear reactor completely safe and you can figure out like how how much power you're going to get out of it and how much you know um, EU per tick because if, if you make a nuclear reactor that, that overheats um, and you have to turn it off, uh, you figure it's not going to be generating any power while it's turned off. So that kind of equates to a, a lower um, EU per tick than, than something that's safe. So, so I'm going the safe route on this. Hmm, do I have enough of these? I, I might have to actually make some more. We'll try it out though. I think I need to make it like at least one more of these things. I could set it up with just these uranium cells, um, because these are these are gonna become like uh, what is it depleted uh, isotope cells in the end, and then you can recharge them with other uranium cells. So so once you have these started, you can actually make another nuclear reactor just to recharge. Um, depleted uranium cells and turn them back into this. You just need uh, coal dust to you put these like the depleted uranium cell you recharge it and then it's like a re-enriched re uranium cell and then you put it together with uh, coal dust and it makes another brand new uranium cell. So you can pretty much have infinite um, infinite nuclear power like that and it, and it generates a little bit of EU even though it's really low like um, they're called uh, breeders, breeder reactors when when they um, you know are just recharging depleted uranium cells. Anyhow, let's let's get this started. I, I want to figure out where I'm gonna put this. First of all, we need to. Uh, oh yeah, I expanded my chest out. I um, these are all linked up to the extra stuff that I get. So if the you know these chests overflow, it'll keep on filling up out this way. And I just made some more chest for organizing stuff a little bit better because these were getting filled up. And uh, I also have ingots separated from, from this chest now. So I could actually take ingots out of the... And th this is all the stuff that's going to go in here now is like, um, you know, lapis and platinum dust. This stuff, any, any gems or whatever, diamonds, uranium. And all the ingots are going up here. Okay, so let's grab some wire. Uh, I want to put this a little distance away. I'm I'm pretty sure these these uh, 
reinforced stone will block any any damage if if my reactor were to explode which I'm, I'm not setting it up in a way that it's going to explode but just in case there's a bug or something that suddenly causes it to explode <laughs> we we will be protected from that um, but I'm gonna put this a distance away from my base anyway uh, because you're gonna kill any living creatures around and I, I don't wanna you know kill all my my farm animals over the, over there Just thinking of making it maybe in the ground somewhere around here uh, I could put it above ground kinda seems seems better to kinda keep it tucked away underground though and oh yeah you can see mobs on the mini-map uh, I suppose you could with the other one too um, and I, if you're playing a multiplayer, um, it says that you can see other players on the minimap, which is, that's pretty cool. I mean, you can bring up like a big map and kind of, you know, find someone real easy if you're, you know, looking to collaborate with them somehow. Or if you're hunting them down. <laughs> so yeah, the... The nuclear reactors. Um, this one's going to generate, I think, just a little bit more than than my MFFS uh, power converter is is working at. So, not really too much extra power I'm adding here. I'd have to probably make a few nuclear reactors or set it up a little differently. Um, I know Greg Tech adds some more nuclear components that'll keep things maybe a little bit cooler. Um, but um, for now, this is only going to be generating, I think it's like one, it's 150 or 160. I'm just going to put these two guys right next to each other. And um, okay, let, let's just go get this thing built. Okay, I think I'm going to start from within my house, actually, because I want to link it up to the wire right away. Um, but uh, th this is the input wires from the thermal generators and the solar panels. So I want to link it up to this one. Um, I'm not sure what the maximum EUs this thing can carry is. But I don't think we're going to hit that any anytime soon with this anyway. Okay, I've cleared out an area for the nuclear reactor chamber room. Um, don't think I have enough blocks for this. Uh, not even close. <laughs> but let's let's try and at least get a little bit of this done. Gonna have to make some more of these, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Actually, you know what? I could. See if I can take, pick these up with the laser. No. Oh, those those don't work on. Laser doesn't work on that. <clears throat> Guess this is kind of, kind of like obsidian. It's it's well, it's actually harder to break than obsidian. Okay, so I'm gonna save some blocks, and actually line some of the room with um, with cobblestone. Okay, and I'm putting the wire, um, I'm having it so the wire kind of, there has to be an opening for the wire to come out of this chamber room, like, so some of the blast can get out if it's uh, just coming straight out of the room, so you gotta kind of curl it out, um, that way if the blast comes out this way, it's gonna get stopped by one of these bricks. Um, 
and let me let me finish this up so I can show you. Um, so yeah, the wire is going to come out. So the blast would be coming out like right here, and I think the blast will pretty much stop right here. It can't really get up this hole because the way these blasts work is I think they come straight out and they don't go like around corners and stuff. So this sh this should prevent it from blowing anything else up. <laughs> Hopefully. And this room isn't symmetrical, but no worries, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, okay, now let's set down the nuclear reactor. Just have to set it. I'm going to set it one up because you can't you have to place the rea the reactor down first and then you can put these on the sides of it um, but you can't set these things down first and I'm gonna set one of these on the ground level so let's put a dirt a dirt block underneath it and I'll put this thing in the corner maybe let's see yeah I could put another one right next to it actually uh, maybe I could put the the breeder right next right next to it right here um, then I could probably put one right here too yeah actually this has a lot more room than I thought it would um, so we'll probably end up having three nuclear reactors that's gonna be a little while though these things are kind of expensive to make <laughs> I'm not even sure if I have all the resources to make uh, a couple more maybe I do I don't know Okay, and so there's your nuclear reactor. Um, the default one just has about this much space, I think. Uh, so the more chambers you add on, adds more lines of like space that you can put nuclear components in. Uh, okay, let's. I'm gonna have to go back and grab the nuclear stuff, and you have to have a wire touching this somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna have it touch right there, I guess. Yeah, that'll. That'll be good. Um, and you have to have a lever to turn this thing on. I think I'm going to have a remote uh, lever for this. Right now it's okay because this is going to be 100% safe. Uh, so I can just leave it on. Um, I'm also going to make an industrial information panel. And I'm going to put it uh, over by the main base uh, so I can monitor this thing from far away. Um, that's also going to take a little bit of, uh, resources to build. I, I, maybe I'll do that this episode. Um, I might just get this running first though. And I just cleared out my whole inventory because these things don't stack. So they take up a lot of your inventory space. I uh, just want to make sure I have all the necessary things with me though. That's good. Er, yeah, I don't like to leave it behind. <laughs> and until you turn this thing on, the having the nuclear rea like stuff in here isn't gonna start overheating or anything. And that's that's how you can stop it from overheating. Actually, you just turn it off. So that's why it would be good to have some control from a distance from this for this thing. Like I'll have, I'll have the information panel over there. Um, I'm gonna have to put a bunch of like range upgrades in into it so it can, you know, see this thing. But let's just put this stuff in here for now. And I think I'm gonna have these right in the middle. Um, uh, the way I had this set up was. Uh, I remembered it because it was shaped kind of like a butterfly. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm going to need four more of the heat, these heat exchangers. Okay, I didn't make enough components, apparently. Hey guys, uh, I just noticed I was out of lava. Like, there's no lava running through any of my pipes. It's like, what the hell's going on here? I go check this out, and I was thinking, okay, I play some blocks up next to this uh, 
I put some wire up next to it, maybe that was causing it, or maybe putting blocks right here, I had a pathway, uh, so I could easily get to my reactor chamber. But no, it's, uh, it looks like an Enderman. Uh, this is what I'm guessing happened. An Enderman, or Enderman teleported into my lava tank and placed a dirt block. <laughs> How the hell is that possible? <laughs> That's the weirdest thing. I I didn't know that. I didn't know that was possible. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully, I didn't lose my lava. Um, I don't think that would. Yeah. Okay. It's back. <laughs> so yeah, if you get too many Endermen, they can teleport into your lava tank and place dirt blocks. <laughs> okay, I've got the extra components ready. Uh, I didn't make near, nearly enough. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I needed a little bit more of these uh, heat exchangers and the overclocked heating vents. I needed six more of those. Um, so I can do this the the more efficient way, which is if you put these right next to each other, each uranium cell, if placed right next to another uranium cell, it like it reflects the neutrons back to it. Um, so the neutrons coming from this one will produce five more EU per tick per uranium cell in this so so if there's four in here that's going to create 20 extra and then this one's going to create 20 extra too so uh, that's like 40 extra you're getting just by placing these right next to each other I think I think <laughs> uh, I'm not 100% sure on the math of all this stuff uh, I'm definitely going to do more research um, in the coming days with with all this nuclear stuff <clears throat> But for now, I know this setup will will be good enough. Because I checked this out in the planner, and this seemed to work pretty good. Um, or this, this was 100% safe uh, from what I could see. And the way I remember how to make this is, it's, is it looks like a butterfly. <laughs> this is the quad uranium cell butterfly. Yep. So... <laughs> The way this works is like it, it spreads the heat out th with these and then it gets rid of the heat with the vents. So the heat exchangers, yeah, you figure it's going to spread it to the, you know, adjacent blocks to it. So this gets spread all the way up here and then it's, it's all getting dissipated with the, the vents. And this comes out to produce, I think it's 160. Um, I'll have to check that. Actually, let's go ahead and do the industrial information panel. I just, I won't do the range upgrades yet. Um, I'll just put the information panel in here. Uh, I'm going to move it into my base later on, but for now, for now it's good just right inside the room here. Um, or maybe right outside the room. <laughs> I don't think that's far enough away. I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the minimum range is on these things, or the, the default range. Okay, so we're going to need a, a sensor kit. Let's just look up kit. Um, yeah, it's this one. Okay, so it's going to need a digital thermometer, uh, frequency transmitter. Okay, easy enough. Um, let's let's go make that. All right, remote sensor kit. So this will read the temperature, or it'll transmit the temperature to an industrial information panel. This will give you a card when you when you right click on the nuclear reactor and then you put that card in the uh, industrial information panel which is the next thing we're going to make and right here okay so I'm going to need some lime dye uh, ink sacks circuit glass okay where did I put the glass okay there it is uh, let's you know what I want to make a bunch of these up here too I want to have one for each of these uh, MFSU's up here that way I can see I'm just gonna have the percentage of how how full it is uh, these are pretty much always gonna be zero if I have the mass fabricator running um, but it, if I shut that off I'd like to see how charged they are maybe I can uh, kinda regulate my power a little bit better that way alright six of those and then for the extender, just gonna make one of these for now. This is just for the nuclear one. 
Okay. Uh, I also need levers for, or I just need one lever for this actually. So let's make one of those real quick. And I'll probably just run a wire on the back of all these up here. But I'm not setting those up right now because I need to make uh, a bunch of energy sensor kits for those, I think. Man, I'd better check my biomass. If uh, Enderman set a block in there too, that would be that would be bad. All right, so that's ready to go. Let's right click on this. Now that gave us a card. See, it says remote sensor mounted, sensor locate, sensor location card received. So if I move this to a different location, this card pretty much becomes invalid. Uh, and you put this in here and you can get a couple circuits back from it so it's just not a complete you know trash um, okay let's put the let's put the information panel right outside here let's uh, okay let, yeah let's put it it'll get a signal from this I think yeah see it lit up right away so that's cool um, the light up there and we just need the extender okay let's put the card card goes up in here these are the range extenders um, in case you put the card in here and it says what you can name this thing um, I'm not going to I'm just gonna leave it blank because we, we know what it is <laughs> uh, it'll show here I'll show you all the indicators here it says temperature for T um, zero, max heat ten thousand. You you can increase that with um, there's there's some components you can put in the in the reactor to upgrade that. Melting. Uh, so if the temperature gets up to eighty five, you're 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 in trouble. Um, and if it's ten over ten thousand, yeah, it's gonna blow up. Output and this is EU per tick. And this is the remaining life on the uranium cells. So this will run for two two hours and 46 minutes, 40 seconds. Um, and you can see that's off. So once I turn it on, you'll be able to see it there. Um, I don't really need the max heat and max melting temp information right there. We'll leave all the rest of these on though. And this, this makes it so it's just the numbers. Uh, that can be useful for other things, but it's kind of nice to ha know what those uh, have the like EU per tick and stuff like that, not just a number. Okay, um, let's turn this thing on. It says on, and it's 160 EU per tick. So that's pretty good. That's not too bad. It's uh, we could set up maybe another one of these guys. I don't know if I'm ever gonna do the quad cores again though, because I think it wastes a lot of this copper. I mean, I have infinite copper coming in, so I guess it's not a big deal. But um, I can actually get 180 out of out of uh, a single, like if I put single uranium cells in these 10 slots right here, that will produce 180. So uh, it's a little better and you d it doesn't cost the extra copper. But I'm gonna need extra components. Cause see, th this doesn't even have to be six chambers. I could probably have this four because as you can see, you can move everything over one and then cut off like all of these extra slots right here. So I think that's like two extra chambers right there. I don't know though, it's, it's fine being at the maximum. Probably going to upgrade it in the future. So yeah, there we go. I've got. Oh, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> we we want this to actually be on its own. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the card out of here and move it. <laughs> Cause we want to be able to shut the door and still read the information about it. So let's let's. Yeah, and I think you, these can always just be broken down. They they won't they won't turn into a machine block or anything because they're not made with one. And 
and I do have another lever. Put that directly on it. There we go. All right, and with that, I'm going to call that an end of this episode. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.